All right. Good afternoon. Scotty patron Stephen Nichols wanted to know what I thought the good, the bad, and the crazy was about Google Duplex. By now you've all heard the samples that they gave from the Google Keynote, so I'm not even gonna go through the trouble of putting those in here. But let's start with the good. An obvious good thing is being able to carry on a phone conversation virtually indistinguishable from a human, which I think is pretty awesome. Which brings me to the next good thing about it is that it captures the nuances of speech using the Mount Everest of data that it's collected over the past long time. And I think a huge benefit is be is the whole set it and forget it type thing where you can just say bleep, blah, 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 set this, do this, set this up, and then go on to things that do require a human because now setting appointments and making reservations and stuff doesn't necessarily have to. I've seen a lot of articles talking about how people should be notified whether they're speaking to Google Duplex or not. And I really think that just putting the bling at the end of, or at the beginning of every phone conversation that starts and it is made by Google Duplex like this. Okay, Google. Oh, hold on. Media volume wasn't high enough. Okay, Google. That sound right there. Putting that at the beginning of every phone call that is picked up and then Google Duplex is on the other line trying to set something up or whatever. And I can definitely see companies creating policies to tell their employees, hey, whenever you hear this, you are not allowed to hang up the phone because most likely, given the very nature of Google Duplex, the fact that Google Duplex is calling you is probably to set up business and everybody likes money. Let's talk about the bad. The amount of data that Google has had to collect and then utilize to, in order to make Google Duplex as good as it is and as impressive as it is makes a lot of people uncomfortable. And in my opinion, like I used to be like that too. I used to turn off Google, I mean, turn off location history and use VPNs whenever I could and stuff like that. I was like, <gasps> big brother. Ah! But just like getting a present for your girlfriend or hold on, excuse me, significant other partner, you have to know a considerable amount about them in order to give them a good present. So if everybody wants Google to be super accurate and super fast and gets frustrated and does not use other digital assistants that are not as quick and accurate, they've gotta be okay with giving some data to Google first. That's just the way it has to be. And like I talked about before, lots of controversy has sprung up about people needing to know whether or not they're talking to a robot. Another not so good thing is that it might not even come to fruition. Like it might not even get publicly released because Google likes to, whenever it finds something out that it can do, regardless of whether it's marketable or has a viable future, they want to be like, everybody look what we did, check this out. Which is, reminds me a lot about me just because I don't like to wait and stuff. When I've discovered or found out something awesome that I could do, I want to show people, I want to share it immediately, even though it might not be the most practical thing in the world. And Google Duplex might ruffle so many people's jimmies that it never gets released on a wide scale. Here's the crazy parts. The concept of finally having collected enough data and processing power from the way we talk to construct a completely synthetic voice while adding the human nuances into it to make it indistinguishable from a human is astonishingly bad Like, I, I think that's Cool, man, I love that. That is super freaking awesome. I'm all for it. Another crazy thing is that people are getting creeped out by this and I, for the life of me, cannot understand why. What, what the f makes it so creepy? You, so some machines listen to the way a lot of people talk over the period of years and then they're like, wait, I can, I can, I can, I can do that. I, can, I see what you're doing here. Um, I see what you're doing uh, and pause, blah, blah, freaking blah. So f what? Why are you so scared about something that can mimic you so well? Ooh, oh my god, it's kind of creepy. Oh, it's eerie. I don't like that at all. Like, it's just accept the coolness that it is and move on. Ever use it or don't use it. Third and final is how amazingly this will help telemarketers that send out bulk messages and bulk calls with recorded messages. If you don't know that who just called you is not a human, then you're way less likely to hang up. So it's really good news, crazy awesome for the telemarketers, but of course, nobody likes those. However, think about this. If Google Duplex is as good as it is, and then telemarketers start employing that to do mm, phone marketing, will telemarketers be that bad? Because to me, the most irritating thing when I get a pre-recorded phone call is that it's pre-recorded. If a real human called me 
and tried to sell me something that I don't want to buy, it'd be way less irritating to me. So indirectly, it might make telemarketers not quite so bad. It might make the thing that, that is universally known as annoying not quite so annoying. My final thought is this. Nobody wants to talk to a robot or an automated service. But if you're on a phone call and you can't tell the difference between a robot and a human, then does it really matter? Oh, and Phoebe says hi. We haven't seen Phoebe in forever, have we? No, 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 no. She's, she's gotten into this habit. She's like, no, I'm not interested. No. In, in addition to thanking Stephen Nichols for this vid's topic, I want to thank all the rest of the patrons, starting with the Scotties, the ones that pay 10 to $15 a month. And those are Stuart Glover, Eric Price, Kyler, Stephen Nichols, Nick Hawks, Spidget, Sin O, Josh Utley, Shannon Jones, Unit Omega, John O'Brien, and Christopher Caswell. I stay with my Scotties. My Scotties are my boys. I ride with them. Next, there's a Super Beamers, anywhere from five to six dollars a month, and of which there's only one, and that is Albert. And finally, we have the Beamers, anywhere from one to two dollars a month, and those are Encrypted Bunny and Exocere. Keep Googling and stay beaming. Scotty patron Stephen Nichols wanted to know what my... <laughs> which brings me into the next point, the fact that it tons of different sources from a lot of periods which brings me to the next and I think I've seen a lot of articles lots of controversy is strung up about strung up 